The floor is open for 10 minutes. Please speak. Well, I just would like to say I came from Washington, D.C. just to get out of that space, to be here. <laughs> Fortunately, I had a little small exhibition here, which was good. But I would like to say that um, I call myself an attack artist. And I call myself that because I, I feel that as an artist, it is my job description to shine a light on my time. And this is my time. And if I am not creating art that disturbs the minds of men, then I am not doing my job. So I challenge every visual artist, every literary artist, every poet, every actor, everyone in this room that would call themselves an activist to shine a light on your time. Become an attack artist. Be an after human. An after human is a person that comes after all of this bullshit <laughs> and raises up cultural awareness and diversity. I am an after human and I challenge you to join me. Hello, my name is Eric McGregor. I'm a photographer. Um, I'm an artist and um, I came out of Occupy Wall Street. And um, I, I really um, congratulate Occupy Museums for holding all these spaces and all these activities. And um, uh, I just want to add that in what you were saying, we as artists have a tremendous work ahead of us. We discovered during Occupy Wall Street that art opened the space widely to start conversations and, um, and change radically the system. And um, uh, we as an artist have a, a, um, a duty in these times. And um, I wanna end out with a quote with um, a friend of mine, an artist during the um, Peruvian Revolution in the 90s when we were fighting the oppression of uh, Alberto Fujimori. And um, uh, it says, is, uh, it's in Spanish, but uh, the best translation is, uh, shame on the artist nowadays that doesn't risk his trade so he won't risk his life. Thank you. Um, I'm an artist and a student, um, I'm a college student, and I was thinking about how we say all of these things, and these things are so amazing and so moving, and we feel so passionate and activated by these things that are happening around us. But the actual work that it takes to like, decolonize and undo all of these things that have been oppressive for such a long time is really uncomfortable, and it's really painful, and it takes the, I just don't think that it's so easy and I think it's important for us to put our goals and put what we say we wanna do and what we wanna create in the world we believe that we can build together. I think it's important to dream that that's possible and to believe that we can create that kind of world but it's not, it's not going to be just like a mission statement. And like being a college student, you see all these like mission statements. Like we're invested in social justice. We're invested in diversity, but what does that mean? Are we actually looking at what we're doing personally? People that say that they believe in racial justice, moving into a neighborhood, knowing they're dis displacing human beings. You know, being on the train and not making eye contact, eye contact with the person who says that they don't have food, that they don't have money, that kind of desensitized behavior and then saying we wanna create change. But we're not willing to look at ourselves. We wanna look at Trump. It's so easy to be like, oh, we're not the police shooting people that are unarmed. We're not the people holding people in detention centers. But yet we're supporting these systems, yet each and every one of our actions are symptoms of these bigger issues. And I think it's really important to create that accountability within ourselves. Like, do we make eye contact? Are we being exclusionary? Are we being elitist? Like, these kinds of things are such a big deal, and they're not just pointing the finger at this Cheeto man who was pretty awful, but we all have, we're all connected to these problems and being accountable and really taking accountability for how we participate in these systems, I think is gonna be a bigger shift and being uncomfortable and being willing to have 
these conversations about race and things that we won't normally talk about. And I think that's great that people are feeling activated, but I also think that we need to do the work. We need to do the homework. We need to read the books. We need to watch the movies. We need to listen. A lot of people are talking about issues that are really important, but a lot of us need to do a lot more listening. Hello, everyone. Um, I would like to start to say, by saying um, that I'm originally from Iraq, um, and I'm very disappointed in everything. Starting from the time that I was back home, spending 30 years of my life under a dictatorship, trying to believe in a hope to get a away from that reality, and then taking the decision to leave my country and came to United States as a refugee, thinking of the place that I will actually see the freedom that this country claimed bringing to my country. And I end up seeing the scene right now, which is shocking me completely, to be at the end of the world, starting my freedom in this country and seeing what's happening to have a dictator actually ruling this country now. I don't know what to expect, and I'm like very happy, I would say, for being in New York, especially, to see all this energy and all these people. As an, an, as an artist who's working a lot on like the politics and the voice, to say the things that we feel and the things that we object and the things that repeat itself in history over and over again. And we don't know where to stop or with whom to talk or how to make our voice loud and I don't know like how to explain this, but I think everyone shared with me this feeling and I'm hoping for our hands to be together, to do the change as artists and activists. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Raj. Uh, I'm a graphic novelist and I can say that without any hesitation because I completed my first graphic novel, scripting it at least, 11 days ago. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I wanted to explicitly state a sentiment that has been subtly stated in certain ways over the course of the evening, but I think it needs to be said out loud, even though it's kind of saccharine and kind of gauche, which is that one of the essential components of what we do here, one of the essential components of our work here is faith. And I don't necessarily mean religious faith. I, I said a few days after the election to a friend of mine, I'm really glad that there is such a thing as Buddhism because right now there needs to be such a thing as a deep and principled way to believe in nothing. And the particular role that faith plays in what we do, and that the role that is multiplied by a factor of two, three to the nth degree in the days to come is, it's impossible to quantify the impact that art has in any given context, because we don't know who we're going to be affecting down the line. We don't know how the work we do is going to be echoing down throughout history. But the fact is that we know that it does because I'm willing to bet almost everyone in this room has had a work of some kind of creativity save their life in some way or the other at some point in their lives. And yeah, faith.